night I was uh, sharing my birth with the lovely Irina, who unfortunately snored, but she was a very nice lady and she helped me not get poisoned in the buffet. It's been a slight change of fortune. Today, I'm in first class luxury. This is my private bathroom. I have to posh up a little bit and then I'm going to take you on a tour of my new surroundings. Which is a private train travelling through Russia's far north and um, we've pulled up at this basically one horse town called Baboyeva which is happens to be a massive railway depot and uh, they're going to attach a, an antique steam locomotive to our train and I think you can hear it right there. You, you like the trains? I like I like being on a train. I don't care what pulls it. You love a steam train, really. Your I like beat, to see one. Heart beats like a little faster when you I see I like to see one on a nice advert, you know, like the Chanel advert, <laughs> where you get the steam train and it's lovely and there's a woman running down in a cashmere coat and there's a, a handsome guy leaning out the carriage and then they clink champagne. But the reality of it means sitting in a railway siding while they tinker with the bloody train. <laughs> So these are actually Soviet trains. They got complete with hammer and sickle. And it feels like the whole town of Baboyeva has come out to see the trains. It's amazing the kind of it's amazing the kind of nostalgia and reverence that steam inspires. And it's interesting that it's a kind of it's a common nostalgia shared by middle-aged British people and young Russians. Way to travel, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. We're in the bar carriage. I think my book said that if you end up in a carriage that has bars on it, you're on the wrong train. I stayed up late last night to. Uh, See if I could get a chance to jump on the footplate. So what you have to do is jump out of the train when there's a water stop, leg it up the side of the train, and and hop into the uh, hop into the steam engine. Where they're where they're happy to have visitors, but we didn't stop for water till about three in the morning. I was I was too tired. So hopefully today. But it never ceases to boggle my mind how extraordinary, big, and unspoiled the Russian countryside is just rumble through it for hour after hour. The train has made a stop to pick on, take on water at Sankovo, which is uh, not a place you'd normally visit, which is, I think, one of the great pleasures of travelling on this train. You just see a side of Russia that is so, so sort of hidden, so off the beaten track that you, you feel like it's a privilege to get to explore it. I'm actually considering buying this house here over here. <laughs> <laughs> What's attracted you to it? I think it's the nightlife really <laughs> attracted me. It was the nightlife to me to this town. Oh look at the town, it's hopping. <laughs> Спасибо вам. До свидания. Всего доброго. Uh, and 
and it's humid. And uh, I might not be able to get down for a couple of hours. It's like some weird kind of new age therapy being in there. Because you come out feeling immensely energized. It's really weird. I prescribe a dose of that for anyone feeling a bit down. So a lot of unpredictability about steam travel. Are you either running out of water or coal or something? Anyway, so this is another stop. Um, we're in the town of Kalyazin. Talked to a lady who said that that kind of sort of beautiful and spooky old building is a closed uh, educational institute. And she said to go down here, down to the bank. She said it was very pretty um, and I would be able to see the Volga. So I got about, I've got about 50 minutes before the train leaves, so I'm going to go see Mother Volga and pay my homage to her. When I was learning, started learning Russian when I was 13 years old, this was, a, this was a closed country. And I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would be able to hop off a train at a whistle stop somewhere, stroll around, see people swimming in the Volga, and then walk back to the train and set off again. And maybe it's an illusion, but I feel like you, you know, getting a glimpse of the texture of ordinary people's lives in a place that's not in the headlines and that is you're not famous and not of any geopolitical significance. But nonetheless, this is Russia, you know, this is the heart of Russia. And, and I feel I'm privileged to be kind of wandering around.